Our next speaker, Sachin, is going to talk about Agile Maturity Assessment. Right after that, we'll announce gifts and then uh, gifts for the quiz and the Twitter contest. A little bit of retrospective for today. And after that, we'll open for um, snacks and gifts. So any of you having questions, we can just catch up after this uh, Sachin stuff. Nice talk by JP. I really appreciate that. Okay, well, let's... As you start off the exhibition in 3D, I'm going to end up, end up with this. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, any guesses what this is all about? I'm not sure if any of the companies are doing it. Because uh, we started off with this just because we thought we had some problems somewhere which this could fix it. I will talk, talk about more as we proceed further. But anybody does has idea what this could be? Any clue? Yeah. Assessing the maturity of the thing. Exactly. Of the company. Or the other company. What? Team and company. Okay. Fine. So yeah, this is more about team. So what do you think? Uh, is agile a bottom up approach or a top down approach? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me give you some background. Now we have around uh, 10 to 12 teams here for working in Provenus. And uh, we believe that we do good work. We do good scrum. Right? And we have some good backup for that. Like Jeff, uh, Jeff Sudan and Ken Schwaber to help us with that. And uh, we thought, do we really do good agile? How do you measure it? How do you know that you're doing good? Our team, everybody are aware of agile values in the Or they are just doing agile, but not really knowing it. How to go about doing it. So we decided on doing this and let's try out how this works out. And this really works out very well for us because we are doing this for past one year. And also we are providing this as a service to any companies who need it. So let me go through it, what I should be doing this. So why Agile Maturity Assessment? The vision basically here is, it's not finding faults here, it's helping teams do better with Agile values, not just doing the Scrum framework. Right? So helping teams and company ensure continuous measurement and improvement of the agility and quality. Again, the word agility, as JP emphasized, is the same agility I'm talking about here. Provides a clear insight on current state of the team. You need to understand what the state of the teams are. How they are doing with the agility. What kind of mindset they have. The agility mindset that we spoke about is the same mindset that we we'll look at here. Analyze the sprint execution. How the execution happens. This is the agile execution again. So we have lots of you know, coordination here. Yeah. So identify pain areas. Where are the problems the teams are facing? And how can we, as an expert, agile people, can help them to solve it? Such as improvements, right? This, so we are, we are all at the positive side. We are not pointing at any negative aspects of the team here. But those negatives would help us to make it positive by helping them do, do, do things better. Help increase overall production. That's the major reason why we do assessments. What is Agile Maturity Assessment? An experienced Agile expert revive, reviews every Agile team once every sprint. So what do you mean by experienced Agile expert? Who do you think should do this? Any people, any person who have really done Agile successfully in their life, not once, but multiple times. And they've turned around teams which were weaning and not really doing well into a successful teams who are hyper productive, sprint or sprint. Those are the people who actually stand a chance to be agile experts. Right? And because he should know it, what we're looking at here. Assess the team on their current practices. Come up with team rating, expert, medium, and beginner. Right? So this actually tells them where they are and what's their growth ladder is. And how they can reach because we need to have a vision. So we need to set vision for the team also. So we could say, guys, you are doing good, but this is where you are. And this is where you are reach, and we are there to help you do that. That's the main ambition of doing it here. Now how we do this? So this is 
how the guys know here, this is scrum. This is how things are executed here. Uh, yeah. yeah, so clear. So when the uh, the audit guy, the assessment guy visits, he looks at the product backlog. I'm not elaborating every step here because if you need it, contact me. I can provide you service for this. Okay, so well maintained product backlog. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what we check for here is how the product backlog is structured. How important is product backlog? Very important. And how do you assess it? For it has been prioritized. For many people. Priority. 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 A lot of things. Health. What else? PO. How do you how do you make sure because PO is a part of the uh, development team, right? He's a part of the scrum team, right? How do you know he's doing his job better properly? Because it's very important. So he is a person who definitely gets you to a state that whenever you are starting your sprint, you have you have a concrete scope which needs to be delivered. Because that is how that piece efficiency can be maintained. That he continuously supplies enough of the stories which the team uh, scrum team can take it and start delivering it rather than waiting the. Exactly. But here we are intending to see how it is well maintained. What I mean by well maintained is how this you know is see basically the product. Backlog here is to deliver business value, right? So, is it delivering business value, right? Is it structured enough, or the stories are small enough that team can execute them? We cannot have stories, for example, of eight to thirteen story points, and the capacity of the team is around eight story points per sprint. It doesn't really make sense, right? So, we'll be looking for those kind of aspects here. Then the next thing is team portion deliver value. When the team breaks the product backlog into sprint, sprint backlog, how it has been broken? Is it burned down there? Is it being cracked? Is the team doing doing daily skyrocks? How they are assessing their day-to-day -day activities? Are they fine-tuning themselves to the changes that are happening? This is what happens in this particular aspect. How team delivers sprint goal? What's the strategy? How would the team execute the sprint goal? What kind of practices they are they following? Like how going to do it? This is what we assess in this particular aspect. Extreme programming practices. Why is it important to do extreme pro programming practices? Why not just scrum? Anybody is doing XP practices here? This focus is on execution. Yeah. So anybody is doing it? Uh, are you guys doing? We kind of do like. Not fully, but okay. Some. Okay. So, are you okay doing just Scrum and not complete X practices, or do you have some problems doing that? See, some of them like uh, pair programming and all that. Pair programming is one of the major things. Not always management agree for because on the cost of two, we are producing more. Okay. There is a term called classic Scrum, yeah. coined by Martin Pau. You guys know about it. Probably. Right. So this extra practice is basically what happens is uh, teams start off doing a scrum. They do it for maybe seven to eight sprints. They do it well, but then the trend falls back. You know they have problem adding new functionality, adding new code. You know they are not really able to cope up with the pressure, and everything goes down. The productivity goes down. That's where we need to have extra practices. It's basically at the execution level. We are looking at. And the retrospective level, we assess for inspect and adapt. All the people do retrospective, but are they adapting to it? Or they are just retrospective and forgetting about whatever retrospective was done? If that's the case, we look at the previous retrospective and see how things are failing over every sprint. So, this is how we do agile method assessment. And so, what is the value add here? Value add. Well maintained black cloud. All stories are prioritized. Is team aware of PO's vision? Is there a release plan? All stories, these are part of the value, right? not really one. All stories comply with your, the definition of ready. These are some value actually look for. So, what's again, I'll tell you that. Is team pushing to deliver value? 
team does team understand all the stories and the purpose purpose is very important many teams just do it because they are hired to do it but what's the purpose behind it why why the business requires this that understanding is very important so that they can actually add business value to the customers by suggesting them some ideas which are in tangent with their business are the stories small enough to deliver the business value are stories testable deliverable how are stories estimated it's very important aspect estimation so again we had a talk on it are stories refined these are the set of uh, values we 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 derive out of this are all stories split into task task splitting is very important this every team member is involved in splitting task now many times what happens we see is that part of the team members who are good with planning just they three guys sit and split the tasks nobody else is involved so wo kar lenge na let them do it why should we we just uh, execute them why bother about splitting it that shouldn't be the case actually is bond on available is definition of defined and adhered to and how strong, how good the definition that is you know is it really gives a business value out of it extreme programming practices this is what a check our code review is done and reflected this is not a complete list of best practice uh, thing if you walked into the this, this room you must have seen a green red chart hanging up over there those are best practices that we follow and we are turning every team to go green we're helping them uh, doing this so that's the output of that so we we analyze it and then help them to do those practices which they are not able to do it these are the set of values we need to report and what do you think if a team doesn't pay heed to feeling bills what does does it tell you about the team if you walk into a team and see that all the bills are failing right and then one one bill is green then again you have 10 sets of feeling we feeling bills again one green so what do you what do you make out of it what do you think about the team what kind of agility agile values they have Not me, not failure. Because first failure itself, then stop the line and fix the problem. Yeah, but what do you think if the team lets lets that happen? Response. Fragile. 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 Actually, in this scenario, for example, uh, if the build is for example in a day, if there's 24 builds and say five builds are failing and six builds are successful, that's all it is. And then again, they are checking in continuously. Okay. At the same time, they are fixing the problems. Also. Yeah, but tell me one thing. Now there are six builds which are failed. Okay. Right. So suppose the first build which failed had some problem because which it failed. Maybe you just remove the parsing, or there was a compilation problem. Then you have the second build after which which failed again, which also had a problem apart from the problem which was there earlier. Right. Third build also same problem. Okay. Now you have a bunch of problems yes. there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so a which one are you going to fix? See, so second consecutive is understandable because he was trying to yeah, but fix something. Yeah, but again it is happening. Then it is not. Yeah, he. How do you know about it? Because you will assume it failed because of the previous problem. It could be that the new team member has added new problem to it. And unless you pass the previous build, you never know that new problem is being introduced. Okay. Exactly. So, so, so these are the things which gives you insight about the team. You know what they are, what state. It's not just assessment. it's inside the agile mindset of the team which tells through these practices how they are how they are what kind of work we need to do with them to bring them to the level that they are at the agile level we have some of the team members here like zeb and we have vijay uh, so these are the guys these are the team he is the master and uh, he is one of the members who attends the agile audits so you want to share some experience of yours vijay For example, if you don't have any audits or practices in place, you just keep doing things and you say we are doing agile and we are doing things good. But at the end, when you see, when you have such a practice listed down and you see, you see all in red. The reason behind this is that you are doing it, not doing up to the mark what is expected. For example, take an example of automation. So you say you have to do it more than 85%. We don't do. We say that it's done unless you have audited or recorded somewhere. We don't know it is done or not. So that's where we keep growing on things. What we list on it could be probably any kind of checklist, not necessarily what the people. It could be different checklist. It helps people grow the team. And there is get a real understanding of budget with that. 
and this is what happens in the inspected app. Does team inspects the good, bad, and possible improvements in sprint? Does team adapts to the inspection success in sprint? This is the last slide. Any questions for me? Just a one what uh, you have shared into the previous slide where you say that not the earlier the where you are mentioning that uh, the team should understand the end goal, which is a very nice statement to have, but in the reality when you know there is a strict timeline and the expectation is that in 10 days or 2 weeks break, you have to deliver this. So, not necessary that whoever is the developer, they understand that you know why are we doing it on the high level, like you know what is the business value, probably even as simple as writing a message into, into a story. So that is probably a good statement to have, but I think it is kind of a difficult to achieve that at the business level. Yeah, that's why assessment helps you. It's part of this failure because it's possible to communicate the yeah. sprint goal in terms of business value. If you're talking about a very trivial story of just adding a message, it's fine, but usually a sprint will have a bunch of stories, which is all related to a business value. So it all depends on how the user stories work were written in the first place and at the time of sprint planning, let's say you're ending the sprint planning, if you say that a sprint goal, guys, the sprint goal is to work on five stories which are many points, that's the worst way of ending yeah. the sprint plan. Instead, if you say, yeah, okay, in this sprint, guys, we are enabling our customers to get a quick help you know, in a number of good clicks, right? that's a feature, and by the way, we are working on these four stories to add this, or to enable this. If that is how the ending happens, that means product owner is being effective. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's how you identify the problem. The problem is with the field, and we will fix that. Yeah. And another thing is like uh, this thing called uh, refinement. So in the in between the sprints, we uh, the product owner and the team comes together and discuss what's going to come in the future sprints. That's the point of time when team should ask what is the benefit they are going to get from this. At the time of planning, they have clear idea that how much they can give to that. Then it, it's just like not just we programmers, we developers. Develop things, don't program. Yeah. That's basically it. Can I expand on BOR? Definition of ready. Yeah, so what do you really mean by it? Yeah, actually what happens is now uh, team and product owner have come up with an agreement saying that I would pick up, the team says I would pick up this particular PPI only when I have this agreement fulfilled. In the sense, I would say that in the agreement I should have the acceptance criteria for all the PPIs in every sprint. That's one agreement. I should have the clear description of that particular PBI. That's another point. I would say that the team should understand the business requirement behind it, why it is being done. That's only DOR. So I can come up with a set of DOR which you think are suitable for you to pick up the item. It shouldn't happen that in between the sprint you are looking for answers. You know, it's a waste of time. The PO has gone out somewhere, he was not there, you are waiting till he comes back. It's a wastage. So those are the wastage we need to eliminate. So DO helps you to eliminate those wastages. So it's that kind of agreement. Agreement between you and the contract between the business and the engineers. Yeah. So you will pull the work into this. Okay. Same thing, similar to definition of done, where you call it's done. It's ready is the opposite way. You know, ready to pick up. Kind of so not changing the acceptance strategy that will be Yeah, yeah if you don't have acceptance criteria, the team can say I cannot pick this up. I need to have acceptance criteria. Sure. I mean, you can, I mean, if the PO changes it in between your sprint. No, so but that's also, no, but yeah, that, that's that's again uh, no, part of it. Okay, what you're saying is yeah. that's general working agreement, so no no new stories allowed in between. And in between. No, he's you're talking, talking about, about are the story is the story ready to be first of all to be pulled into the work? Do we have enough <coughs> clarity? Now we can afford to do this for a sprint for exactly. the items, but not for the entire time. So in between changes of acceptance criteria is not again acceptable because we have planned it, we have agreed upon this. And now again, now there are some scenarios where probably PO thinks that it has to be changed because of some reason. <coughs> you can negotiate with him, yeah. tell him, resist him, okay, it's not possible. He was not possible. But he says, oh, guys, please, some business requirement, very important. Okay, Mr. PO, I'll drop these items because the estimation is going to more. I'll drop the items from the least priority and probably should do it. But the resistance should always be there because it would become a habit for the PO to do this again. Yeah. Any more write question? something called specification by example. Yeah. That's a very yeah. 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 So what, what the question was actually? No, no. I was trying to say that we tried something called specification by example. Okay. Where, you know, probably the acceptance that we have factor into the user story itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So my question was like you have just uh, you know acceptance or definition of then definition of uh, ready. So how many years you guys are practicing this and what is the success story of this? Because we are planning it, but when when it comes to implementation, you know, typical at least that's what I have experienced. Right? We'll have all these you know listings there when it comes to development or you know just you know build it and push it. Yeah, if you ask us, we have been doing it for past 8 years now, 8 to 10 years and we have 11 teams who are doing scrum every sprint, sprint or sprint, we are implementing scrum and we are successful at the best level. I mean, can you give us kind of, you know, the percentage, how you, how many percentage that you guys have met that definition of, done or definition of? Yeah, in all, no, the basic idea here we run with the sprints is, uh, if the definition of done is not met, the sprint is failed. So, an item would not be delivered if the DOD is not met. So, that's that's the basic rule. So, you have a DOD uh, uh, and the other way around also. For each PBI. So, each item you have a DOD. Each PBI. Each item we have a DOD. So, DOD is applicable at the spend level, but for all the stories that you pick. Yeah. So, I've seen people using DOD for spring, for team work, yeah. for task. For each item, there are different sets. So, you know, yeah, generally yeah. Depends on what level you want exactly. to Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think for release, there are also exactly. release there are yeah. something which yeah. you don't have a delivery yeah. yeah. but you have to do must do within a, before you release. For example, some load testing, you know, you can have it as a release level. Yeah. So that's well, what is what we do a little bit differently here is we say don't do stuff once. So, let's say if you want to do this load testing once and release, you're doing it like we store. Because you're going to add stuff. Sure. So, what we did was we broke down the code stuff to what makes sense on the story level. If you are good, doing good here, you just need to extrapolate this one. You will not be surprised at the end. So you pick your surprises now. So we went down to defining the code story. That covers it usually for the code sprint or really Yeah, it's basically at the minus level rather than at the bigger level. So the lower level you do it, the better it is. The more number of time you do it, the better it is. So you might have planned for let's say five stories in a sprint and four of them met DOD, mm -hmm. one did not met. So would you say that sprint failed? Yeah. Yes. But it might have uh, met the sprint goal. No, but sprint, sprint goal was a five stories. Yeah. No, that is not a sprint goal. Sprint goal, as he said, uh, is we wanted to deliver, uh, let's say, what you said is... Uh, right, so you would have chosen a set of values yes. and the values would be mapped into the stories, right? Correct. So when he's saying sprint fail, that means we are not able to have <coughs> all the values. Maybe you would have added one or two values. But what he's saying is that the item which is not complete, we consider that as a fail because it is not meant to be. Maybe you would have given partial value. So it, it depends on how the value is there, a one-to-one -one mapping. Is there a single goal of the sprint and all five stories contribute to that? Or if there are multiple goals, and then a couple of stories contribute to one goal, other stories, it's a part. And some so definition of failure also. Yeah. yeah, I mean, then again, it comes to commitment. When a uh, right. team is saying, okay, we are going to do this thing, they are just forecasting. And if right. you if you are going to judge them, yeah. uh, they have said fail. So, so, fail, so we can say forecast has failed. We can say forecast has failed. Yeah. 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 Yeah